okay, I'm going to do a video on internal security and proving internal security from the Bible, and just explain the concept of internal security, why internal security is a biblical concept. So first of all, the concept of internal security is understanding that it's God who saves you. You don't save yourself, God's the one who saves you. And the Bible says that you can know that you are saved. Go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 in your King James Bibles. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. Because you can know that you're saved. You can have assurance of your salvation. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Scripture is clear. You can know that you have eternal life. And who is the one who gives you eternal life? Well, Scripture tells us that God is who gives us eternal life. God is the one who is providing us eternal life. Go to 1 John chapter 5. Verse 11 says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So God's the one who provides salvation. And understanding eternal security is understanding that God's the author of our salvation, and God saves us. We don't have to save ourselves or have to keep our salvation by our holiness. That would be work salvation. You see, conditional security is nothing more than just work salvation. It's Roman Catholic. Because it's saying that you have to keep your salvation by your holiness and your works. Instead of just saying that God is the one who provides your salvation, and God is the one who keeps you saved. Now, here are some verses that prove eternal security in the Bible. John chapter 5, verse 24. Go there in your King James Bible. John chapter 5, verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So if we believe in Jesus Christ, we're not going to come into condemnation. That simple. See, again, it's God who saves you. He keeps you saved. You will not come into condemnation. John chapter 6, verse 35. Go there. John 6.35, it says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Then you jump down to John chapter 6, verse 39. Another good verse. And again, you keep seeing this theme over and over again of God. He's the one to provide salvation. I am the bread of life, is what Jesus says. And not me, obviously, Jesus, but just trying to give you a visual aid. John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will, with, with, Father's will which hath sent me, that all, that out of all which he hath given, given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up at the last day. Or get up again at the last day. Not the best at reading on a computer, but, you know, that being put aside. Jesus Christ says he'll lose nothing. He says I should lose nothing. You know? Again, he's, our, he's the author of our salvation. Jesus Christ paid for all, all our sins on the cross. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, like the old hymn says. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. Go there. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. And you're going to see this theme over and over again of how God is the one who provides salvation. God, Jesus says, I am the bread, you know, I am the way of life. I, I give unto them eternal life. That's what he says. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck, is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Again, Jesus gives us eternal life, and we're not, no, no, nobody can pluck him out of his hand. And he says we will never perish. And it's kind of funny because he says, uh, no man shall pluck him out of my hand, but then no man shall pluck him out of my Father's hand kind of destroys the whole trinity thing, because if they're two separate persons, I mean, what, are they playing like catch the catch the Christian or something? And he confirms that in verse 30 by saying, I and my father are one. Totally destroys the whole trinity concept. John chapter 17, verse 11 to 12. Go there. John chapter 17, verses 11 to 12. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through my, thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Again, good refutation of the Trinity. They may be one as we are. They're one being. Uh, verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that thou givest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the sign of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. He's keeping us. We're not lost. Again, he's the author of our salvation. We don't have to save ourselves. Jesus Christ saves us. We don't save ourselves. That's the whole concept of eternal security. God saves us. We don't save ourselves. If salvation was dependent on our holiness or our righteousness, then Christ died in vain. Christ was not enough then. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 35 and 39. Go there. Romans chapter 8, 
verses 35 to 39. Another good strong passage proving eternal security. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through him that loved us. You know, again, Jesus Christ. He's the author of our salvation. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things, sorry, nor things present, nor things to come, nor depth, nor height, Sorry, just scrolling down. Nor depth, nor height. Nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us. Um, Romans, or sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 to 8. Go there. It says, So that ye become behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Good kick at the whole post trippers because they say we have to wait for the Antichrist. No, we're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. That's who I'm waiting for. I'm not waiting for the Antichrist. And all these post trippers, I think they will be going into the time of Jacob's trouble because they're not saved, a lot of them. But look at verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? Um, first or Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Another good one. First mention of you being sealed, by the way. For our Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he which established us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God. Look at verse 22. Who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in, in our hearts. He seals us. And we're going to see this thing repeated in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Go there. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. It says... In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Then, of course, in Ephesians 4.30, this is repeated there too. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, go there. In the King James Bibles. It's because I, find it, I say King James because uh, the King James Bible is the word of God. A lot of the modern versions actually deny eternal security. A lot of the modern versions will talk about your being saved, your it, it, you know, you're being saved, you know, you, you believe and obey, that kind of stuff. They, they make salvation to a process of works. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. So if you're sealed, can you become unsealed? I, I, I see some of these uh, heretics that believe in conditional security, they'll say you can become unsealed. You're kidding me, right? So a, you, you can lose a seal, apparently. You can become sealed. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit, but then you can lose that seal. Okay, chapter and verse on that one, please. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Timothy 4, 18. It says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He preserves us. And, of course, uh, another strong one, the final strong one. This is probably one of the strongest verses that proves eternal security. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. This makes a really real problem for a lot of the conditional security heretics. And of course, you know, Peter's not in the Pauline epistles, but there are some things in the uh, uh, books of Peter that are applicable for us Christians. Uh, 1 Peter, or sorry, 2 Peter, not 1 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Go there. Sorry about that. I went to I went to a Second Peter. Yeah, it's in First Peter chapter one verse three to five. So it wasn't the right verse. Um, First Peter chapter one verse three to five. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Look at verse five. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. He keeps us. This goes back, like in John chapter 17, where kept Jesus Christ, he keeps us. He keeps us. And none of us is lost. That's simple. So, the bottom line is that eternal security is about God. He saves us. We don't save ourselves. And Jesus Christ, he saves us. He keeps us saved. That's simple. We don't have to save ourselves by continuing in holiness or, or righteousness or sinlessness or that kind of stuff. That's work salvation. That's Roman Catholic doctrine. You know, it's, it's this thing of, oh, you have to die in a state of holiness, you have to die in a state of grace, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's Roman Catholicism, that's simple. Conditional security is a Catholic heresy. So, don't be deceived by this conditional security. Again, it's work salvation. You see, salvation is by Jesus Christ, but it's also by you having to do stuff to keep yourself saved. Work salvation. It's Roman, it comes from Roman Catholicism. The uh, Catholic Council of Trent, I showed in one of my videos, it condemns conditional security. 
So this, this conditional or sorry, condemns eternal security. Sorry, uh, conditional security comes from Roman Catholicism. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.